What's going on, everyone? Dr. Todd from Move Now, from The Move Now Chiropractor, and Danny from Move Now University and Gonson Spinal. I'm from Gonson Spinal Wellness, too. We're, we're both from there. All right, should we just start this over? Dr. Todd and Danny from both Move Now and Gonson Spinal Wellness out here in beautiful Meridian, Idaho. I'm actually an Eagle. You're actually technically in Caldwell. Caldwell. Okay, Caldwell. So if you've ever been to Idaho, beautiful areas. You need a place to stay. We have some spare bedrooms. No, I'm just joking. I'm not going to volunteer that up. But anyway, this is episode 286. We're going to talk about, we're going to actually flip this a little bit. I'm going to interview Danny. I'm going to let her talk because she's got a lot to share. And I hope that you chiropractors out there that listen to this and watch this and follow this, find some things that are helpful where you share this with your staff, with your team. And you turn them onto this podcast, you let them listen to it. This one's going to be as much for them as it is for you. So we're going to talk about how Danny does it as an office manager, how she juggles this with her family, her kids, her personal life, ups, downs, tricks, all that sort of thing. And uh, I'll just say, if you think you got it hard, you think you got a lot on your plate, listen to this one. It'll make you feel better because Danny does quite a bit. She juggles quite a bit. Very, very impressed with her work ethic and ability to do it all. And uh, with that, we'll roll the intro. Here's what so many chiropractors have been searching for. How can we expand our clinical reach by finally addressing more than just the segmental component with our patients, but at the same time, not feel like we are selling out our chiropractic principles? The reality is our patients count on us to guide them. And when it comes to results, we must also address their posture and their movement. The verdict is out. Patients have spoken, and this is what they want and what they need focused on functional movement and corrective exercise. So how do we practice in a way where our community is engaged, excited, and seeking us out because of this comprehensive results-based approach? That's the goal we've all been searching for, and this podcast will show you how. My name is Dr. Todd Pickman, and welcome to the Move Now Chiropractor. All right, we're back. Can you hear me okay, Danny? Yep, I can. All right, cool. All right. Well, let's get this rolling. So episode 286, before we get started, before we get started, and you'll hear this in the outro as well, but if you're interested in learning more about our systems, and that's the thing that I, I think should be most attractive is systems to make your clinic run well. We're not just the, hey, if you want to do exercise, come and follow us. Like that's how we started. It's a huge part, but it's how to put multiple things together. This will probably apply to any way that you practice. You will get a benefit out of following our stuff. I think so. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm biased on this, but I really think so. And so on the, on with that said, check out our demo. It's demo.movenowu.com, like Move Now University, demo.movenowu.com. You can watch a 30-minute pre-recorded demo and you can see behind the scenes a little bit of all the content and what we've built and what so many chiropractors and their clinics around the country, around the world have followed and are utilizing and implementing into their clinics. And it's helping them a ton. And Danny is our support for a lot of the doctors. So she's on the phone on Zoom with them on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. So she's in the trenches quite a bit. I'm in the trenches seeing patients. She's in the trenches in the clinic helping with staff. I mean, this is what we do. This is this is our life. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to interview Danny and just have her share a little bit about just briefly on her history, because I, I think that helps for some of you that are new to this that don't know who she is. And then fast forward to today and and just the ups the downs and how she does it so uh again if you have staff if you have a if you have a office manager if you have a front office person even if you have like a like a two-person operation this is going to be good for them to listen to I, I can promise you that so so danny why don't you explain a little bit about just your history of how you got into chiropractic because i i, I learned this doing one of these podcasts with you that you were you were planning on going into something totally different and then you end up yeah. doing chiropractic mm -hmm. yep all right take it away so initially i went to cosmetology school got my cosmetology license thought that that is what i wanted to do um i had a little bit of spare time my senior year decided to do in california it's called an rop program so it's where you can go into medical assisting dental assisting to get credits for your senior year i ended up doing a medical assisting program because that was very interesting as well and I was the only one in my class to do my internship at a chiropractic office. So I was 17 years old. That's where I learned about chiropractic. And I got hooked and been doing it ever since. 
started out as a receptionist inside of chiropractic offices, eventually became a CA doing therapies, and then quickly became an office manager and been doing it 18 years. Okay, cool. So f- fast forward to today, yeah. and, and we've covered this in other podcasts and other things that we've talked about, but again, I think we have to retell the story a little bit. You you then had responded to an ad that we had put out when we were looking for like office manager position in the clinic. Yeah. And for whatever reason at the time, it, it like more on our part than anything, we had you apply and we kind of weren't ready. And then mm-hmm. I ended up reaching out to you a, like what, a couple months later? Yeah, it was like two months later. Like two months later, I think I texted you and I was like, hey, I got something else for you. Like right now, I think you'd be awesome. Are you interested? And you immediately responded. You're like, yep, call me. Mm-hmm. And then we talked and that was that was to, to, to essentially be doctor support and really play a huge role in Move Now University. And so that's where you got started. You... Mm-hmm you essentially learned all the systems and all the stuff to be able to help all these chiropractors. And then we had a need for office manager. So why don't you take it from there and tell the story? Yeah. So um, you had a need for an office manager. Your old office manager was migrating out. She was moving some changes in life. And so you said, Hey, do you want to go ahead and manage the office? And one big thing that we addressed uh, when I started with Move Now is the need to be available for my kids because my husband travels. So I couldn't sit in the office, you know, from nine to five, we needed to come up with something, some flexibility. So we decided to come up with a system of a hybrid office manager to where I would go into the office and be present uh, two to three days a week. We wanted less, but sometimes needed more. Um, and I would do that, conduct staff meetings, check in with the staff in person. And then while I was at home managing remotely checklist system for our staff, Asana, we've talked about it before, kind of a checks and balance uh, system for the staff. And then I can log in remotely from home to see what's going on um, on the cameras inside of ChiroTouch. So it's like I'm there, but I'm not there. Yep. And then also too, a a big part that you took over, we used to outsource our billing. Yeah, I mean, that's a big one. So we outsourced our billing and I'll just share the name because I think everyone should, should know I have no allegiance to any of these companies. So it was, it was CT pro bill that we used. And initially when we, we used them for several years in the first couple of years that they had a good team. And I think things were pretty decent. They had goals they set. We did meetings. My dad helped out a lot with that as far as going to the meetings and, you know, reporting back and coordinating with our billing staff. And because we still had to have billing staff to to prep a lot of stuff and still do pieces inside the clinic. And then CT Pro Bill was doing their portion and they were, you know, charging their fees, doing their thing. And we were expecting like a really top shelf product for that. And I mean, at first it was decent and then it just got progressively worse. They changed some staffing and it got to the point where it was more frustration. It was more babysitting than, than anything. I mean, like instead of us saving all this time to be able to justify paying to do it. And then that's where you nudged me multiple times. You're like, you know, I could do the billing. Like, you know, I could do it. Hey, Dr. Todd, I can do it whenever you're ready. And then finally I'm like, are you sure? Because if you take it on, I don't want it to, you know, drown you with everything else. And that segues into what we're talking about today is Mm -hmm. all the different roles and the hats that you wear for like work wise, and then how you juggle that kids. And now all your kids are doing homeschool or most Mm -hmm. of your kids are doing homeschool. And then husband's out of town periodically. And, you know, you're like signing in, signing out. You're like, I'm in work mode. I'm in mom mode. I'm in wife mode. And you're going, going through, and then I'm going to do something for myself. I'm going to sleep. I'm, you know, and so just, just sharing how you do all of that and keep your sanity. And uh, so why don't you pick it up from there and fill in a lot of the actual, how you do that? Okay. Yeah. So maybe I'll just start with what kind of a typical day looks like uh, from start to finish for me. Lately, it's been a lot of just me by myself. My husband started a new job. He's traveling a lot, so he's not really home. 
So when I'm by myself, um, get up early in the morning before the kids get up, I need to take our dogs out, We've got two dogs, I need to take them out. And then I come back in, make coffee, get my laptop started, sit up at the table, check emails. Um, I go in, I check the billing first thing, see if there's any new payments that came in, any claims that I need to fix. Uh, so I'll go through that. That usually takes about 45 minutes, just kind of getting my day started, looking at everything. And then I'll go wake the kids up, make them breakfast, um, have them all sit down and eat, jump back on my laptop because I can keep eyes on them while they're eating and get some of my work done too. If it's a Tuesday or a Thursday, typically shift starts at 7.30. So um, make sure I'm logged on at seven o'clock so I can see chat, make sure everything's going good. If anybody has questions, I can field those questions before shift starts. So, so fill in some of that stuff because some yeah. of our people listening, when you say like chat, they're like, what do you mean chat? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so we have an internal chat system uh, through the office, through O Messenger. And since we have so many different moving pieces throughout the office, every workstation with a computer has access to this chat. So it's like we're sending instant messages to each other via the computer. So that way we can paint the picture for the rest of the staff, staff members on what everything looks like in every department. We let them know which patient is going to what room. So that way Dr. Todd and his scribe Jenna can see who is going into what room so they can anticipate that. And then the front desk can communicate with the back if there's any issues or somebody needs a journal, somebody starting home care, or somebody needs a little bit of extra attention in the back. We can communicate that through instant message. When I'm at home, it's super helpful uh, because if the girls have a question, well, or Dr. Todd, if you have a question, while I'm at home, you guys can send me an instant message and I respond immediately problem solving. So that way you don't have to wait for me to physically be there or try and call me on the phone. I can do it via chat. So I always make sure that during office hours, I am logged on. So I'm on chat. And then, and then also too, something to clarify in the chat, we, we, we typically have two main group chats going. We have one that we call ATC, which stands for air traffic control. And that's basically like rooming and where is a patient in the clinic? Right. And and so on ATC, clarify or correct me, is everyone on that? Everyone in the clinic's on ATC? Yeah, everybody's on that just so that way uh, everybody can see who's where. And if somebody, if front desk is bogged down and one of our exercise therapists knows that a patient is done there and can go to a room, they can pick up and room a patient. So that way it's not all on the front desk. So everybody is in ATC so they can help room. And and, and having the, the, the two different chats is helpful because like sometimes there's other messages that you want to talk about something else going on in the clinic. And so we have this stuff stays in ATC. And then the mm -hmm. other one is basically like a lifeline for front office to communicate back office and stuff that doesn't have to do with like patient care and stuff, right? Yep. So there's right. a group chat where we send long messages and then ATC is this patient room one, this patient, you know, room two. It's very short and sweet in ATC. So that way we can see. Gotcha. Okay. Well, good. I just yeah. learned something. I didn't realize that that's where the short messages go because sometimes I probably put the wrong messages in the wrong chat. <laughs> so yeah. good. It's I'm always okay. wondering, I'm like, do I put it in this chat or that <laughs> chat? And it's like on our screen in, in our adjusting room. And normally it's Jenna, my scribe. She, she She's the one usually doing it. But if she has to run out to, to, to help a patient with like an x-ray or, or go communicate something, she's gone and I'm in there and then I have to take over and I have to tell the front desk, I, um, I'm with John right now. And then they know, okay, I'm seeing John. And then they know the rooming order. They know how long it usually takes. They know what type of appointment it is. If it's just, if I'm just adjusting them, you know, it takes maybe like three minutes. If it's, if it's a special appointment where I'm going over setting goals with the patient, which is something we do, it's part of our system inside of move now, like day five, we go through goals. We set goals, it takes probably another seven, eight, 10 minutes even. So like we update the staff of telling them how that visit's going. So they know when to room. Because our setup in our clinic, and this will work in whatever setup you have, you know, like some chiropractic offices go room to room, 
you know, they have multiple rooms. So like the doctor is moving. How we do it is we stay in one room and patients come to us. So we have three changing rooms that lead into an adjusting room. They're changing rooms because we do Gonstead. So patients are scoped. They're checked on the surface of the skin. Men pull shirt off. Women have a gown on from the waist up that opens in the back. And so that changing room serves that purpose, but it also serves a purpose as it's like, it's like a holding area for that patient so that we as the doctor always have someone primed and ready to go so that we can just keep up that flow. Yep. Okay. You know, you know, it is, it is funny, Danny, because like you and I and everyone else in the clinic are so familiar with our systems and so yeah. familiar with our layout. And it's just like, it's like rules of life for us, you know, yeah. that, that oftentimes when we're telling someone else about it, it's easy to assume that everyone just practices like this. Yeah. I always forget. Yeah. Which, yeah. but, but also too, I think, I think is a thing which is profound because those other chiropractors out there, like you chiropractors out there that are listening to this right now, you might have systems that you love that work great for you. Awesome. Maybe there's things that we do that you can add to or adjust a little bit to help, or you might be how I was for a long time of like constantly trying to reinvent what I was doing. Like I was always jumping ship and going like, nope, still not happy with that. Scrap it. Let's try this. Nope. Not happy with that. Scrap it. Try this. And always trying to get like better and better systems that I didn't feel like I had to keep modifying. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, back when you and I met, we already had 90 plus percent of the systems in place. So it wasn't a whole lot of change, but before that, and I can, you know, I can, relate to maybe the frustration on the on previous staff part when when they have to go through that transition process being a staff member and having systems adapt and change and it's maybe tough for them not having something like like i barely just learned the last system and now we're changing it again that's what we went through for the first couple of years after we opened this this clinic and then mind you everyone for the audience it wasn't like we opened this clinic and that was my first day out of chiropractic school like i, I practiced for several years before that it was my first time owning and running my own business. So I wanted to do things differently. I felt like there was things to do better. You've heard me talk about this a lot before. I didn't really think I'd like to put all the systems together, but now I've realized I really do enjoy that part. I, I enjoy the systems and problem solving because it's so nice because when something doesn't go right, you can just go, well, let's review how the systems are being followed. Are they being followed? Where did it break down? And you can diagnose it and you can fix it. And it helps eliminate frustration. And and then you see the result of like just turning that little gear and watching things change. Like yesterday, there was a Facebook Live I did about our front office situation. I mean, that drastically changed pretty much immediately. And I I, I didn't realize, but in our huddle yesterday, our pre-shift huddle, Courtney had reminded me that she's only been up at the front desk now for three weeks. Yeah. And it's like, you know, and then yesterday I was talking with Dr. Zach, our, our associate doctor, and something he brought up, which I think is very accurate, is that the main person we had up there before was substandard. Okay. Mm -hmm. Courtney is above standard. So she's doing stuff so exceptionally above and beyond. So it's not even like she's just following our systems to the T. Yeah. She's like doing our systems, but then she's trying to like do better and do more and like compete with herself and and it shows i mean our, our our numbers and our production has turned around very very quickly which was really really nice to see i mean it's it it it's it's great because now we can focus on other stuff yes. in, instead of being like oh our numbers went down let's bring our numbers back up yeah like i mean come on we got podcasts to do we got we got we got programs to put together yeah okay anyway so, okay. Uh, where did I cut you off or intervene on the chat? So just being, um, you know, when I have my computer up, always being available in chat. So in the mornings, um, if it's a Tuesday or a Thursday, I make sure that, you know, I'm behind my computer by 730 with chat remoted in. So that way, if the girls have questions, anybody in the office has questions, I can answer them immediately and be available to them. Once the kids are done with breakfast, we'll migrate upstairs. We just recently redid our upstairs to where now my office is in the loft and we've created an entire school room for the five kids who are doing homeschool. 
So that way I can be on my computer and I can be working while they are doing their work as well. Um, a lot of their work is on their computer and then some of their work is pencil paper. So I'll block time off so that way I can sit with them and do their pencil paperwork, spelling tests, writing, all that stuff. Um, but for the most part, I'm in front of my computer so that way I can get my billing done, claims to send out, claims that need to be fixed. If there's any diagnosis codes that need to be input, I remind Jenna. We collaborate on that to get those in. And Jenna is my assistant scribe. Right. She's kind of like the assistant manager pretty much. So she's like manager on duty for physical stuff. And she will communicate with Danny. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So to be able to lay out an entire day through the thick of a shift while the staff is in the office, it varies day to day. And there are a lot of like one-time things that pop up. So the most important aspect of what I do, I think is being able to be flexible and jump from one thing to the other. If I'm in the middle of posting insurance payments and something comes up that needs my immediate attention, that's at the clinic. I need to be able to remember where I stopped with that and then shift my focus hundred percent to problem solving this problem that needs my immediate attention. And then when that's solved, be able to shut that off and pick back up where I started. How and you, that happens a lot during the day. And then just speaking to that, because I think being able to, you know, be like immersed in a project and then put it on hold and go to something else and then come back to it. Do, do you have a specific strategy that you use? Do you make a note on a piece of paper? Do you keep the window open somewhere where you can pop back into it? Like what, what, what system do you use for that? Yeah. So if it is something that, like a patient concern or something like that, I'll jot it down on a piece of paper so that way I can jump back in Cairo touch when I flip screens. So my setup upstairs is I have one laptop, two screens. One screen has my remote login. So I can see the schedule. I can see Cairo touch. And then my bottom screen is my personal computer to where I can have my email our clearing house pulled up so I can post payments, um, all the other things that are outside of what I need in my remote login. So bottom screen, if I'm posting an insurance payment, we use Trezetto, I'll have Trezetto pulled up on the bottom screen. If Emily sends me a chat up on my top screen, SOS patients in right now, they have billing questions, what do I do? So I'll leave my screen open on the bottom, I'll jump up to the top screen, pull up the patient account, take a look at their ledger, do a quick audit, look at the notes, look at their care plan, whatever I need to look at in order to give Emily the answers that she needs because she's face-to-face -face with that patient right now. So we'll handle that. I'll make sure everything's good. And then I'll flip back down to my bottom screen and pick up right where I left off. Um, so usually I just flip back and forth between screens. Sometimes I will just need to make a note on a piece of paper. So that way when I'm done with something. If I'm in the middle of uploading a video or I'm on Zoom, <laughs> that happens a lot. Um, while I'm on Zoom, I'll get text messages because I can't have chat open at the same time. So I'll get text messages and like, hold on, I'm on Zoom. I'll address it when I'm done. So I'll go back through my text messages. I'll make a little note on a piece of paper. When I'm done with Zoom, jump into Cairo Touch, take care of what I need to take care of, make sure that everything at the office is going good. And then I call them bigger projects. So my billing, um, responding to emails, doing anything with Move Now. I do a lot of Zooms for Move Now. I do a lot of doctor support. So I'm emailing doctors back and forth. I'm text messaging doctors back and forth. So those to me are my big projects. And then little questions that the office have or problem solving, those are like my little breakaways during the day. Um, so being able to break away from my big project and address something at the office that needs immediate attention. So being able to turn on, turn off, and then focus on something else is really important. So I wouldn't necessarily call it multitasking. Some aspects are multitasking, um, but I want these big projects to have my full attention. So being able to turn on and turn off certain things and one side of my brain to stop thinking about this so I can focus on this um, is really important and being able to be flexible. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and like in a similar fashion of writing stuff down, like even today, I'm, I got a bunch of stuff I want to get done today. So I got a piece of paper. I wrote down a list of stuff. I'm crossing it out as I go. Like this morning before we got started, I had to get rec card info over to Jenna. So that means, so like, for example, like I'll just, just 
if I can hijack this for a second, it's Tuesday today. So Tuesday, I don't go into the office. So Danny and I typically collaborate more on Tuesday. Okay. Like mm -hmm. that's our main day to try to connect and do something. That's why we do podcasts on Tuesdays. If we have to talk about something in more detail, sometimes we don't have to meet. We just do it through Marco Polo, which is like a video chat thing on an iPhone uh, or any kind of smartphone, I guess, which I have a Marco Polo message from Jenna. So Jenna's probably asking stuff on the records. So, so, so like side note on that and a project that we're working on, which is on my list today to try to get really pushed forward so we can get this done by Black Friday is, um, is taking our virtual appointment process and we're building a whole like coaching system just on how to put that together like just that piece because i think that's such a huge piece for everyone and it's like like probably part of what we'll have to expand on is how to have a virtual office manager because like this this topic that we're talking about right now as far as how danny's doing this this has major benefits for both parties like meaning meaning Danny has the flexibility to be able to continue on with her life. She's homeschooling multiple children at home. Okay. Yeah. And so she doesn't have to be in the clinic every single day. Now, now granted, like she helps with new hire. She helps interview. Um, mm -hmm. Well, not helps. She does it. So she's, she's, she's running the ad. She's following up with people. She'll come into the clinic in person to meet with them. When we do hire someone, she'll help train them to make sure they're getting trained up properly. And they're hearing it straight from the horse's mouth. And then, she can slowly back off and get back into her rhythm again. So she has to switch gears on those major things too. If we ever have to expand or get a new person, like right now we have a really solid team, but we we have ads going. We're trying to hire one more person. And so I get the emails on those resumes coming in on Indeed and Danny is looking through them and she can stock them on Facebook and see what she can there and then reach out and talk with them. She has a whole process on that. Um, which side note, like for our move now members, that's the kind of stuff that Danny will help share with you as well. Like yeah. most of the stuff we do in our clinic is inside of our program, but some of these things, even like, you know, how to hire someone, what, what ads we use to hire them, like how we do our interview process. Like that's the stuff Danny will work with other doctors and even coach them on. And that's, and that's something that comes with when you join move now university. Okay. So let's see. Uh, the thing I was saying as far as benefits for both parties, like I would say like a big benefit for the chiropractor for me, and this is a cool special situation, but maybe other chiropractors too, if you have that, you know, extra entrepreneurial spirit and you want to do something above and beyond, you have your office manager, you got, you know, like someone like Danny, she knows everything in the clinic, the ins and outs. She didn't start as the office manager. She started for the doctor support for move now, which is like, teaching our systems. So she, she knows our systems really, really well. And she has a long history in chiropractic. So the cool thing is that if you can find someone who has that same drive as Danny, who really, you know, loves this and, and, and lives it and appreciates it, then if you can get them out of the clinic and you get your staff empowered to be able to work without a physical person, there overseeing them all the time. Like you make themselves their own manager in and of himself, which I'll let Danny share about that. Cause that's our checklist process we do through Asana, yeah. which is like a task management program. So let's not forget about that. If you can do that, you can do other projects. If you have something you want to share with the rest of the world, you have some other endeavor that, you know, some little, you know, like side project with something health related that, you know, this office manager person can get behind as well. Now you can expand and do more and not just be a one trick pony. And that's really a passion I have is like, yes, I love seeing patients, but I've done this for, I'm, I'm going on 20 years. So I love seeing patients, but I also love helping other chiropractors and like, and, and being able to teach the stuff that I feel like we have refined. It's too good for us to keep for ourselves. Other people can benefit from it. Patients love it. And so why not allow your patients to love what our patients love and make life easier for you as well? That's why we created Move Now University and Danny plays a huge role in that. All right. So Danny, talk about if it's appropriate now, I don't know if I missed any steps along the way, but you know, maybe talk about like how you can stay out of the clinic because the staff has this checklist system and how you created that and what that's done and how that works. So take it away on that. So this checklist system through Asana, and I feel like we've touched on it before a little bit, but 
the way that I explain it to a new hire, I feel is the easiest way to explain it to anybody on how this works. So we created an Asana checklist. It's an app on your phone, app on your desktop. So they have it pulled up on their computer. They have it on their phone. Basically, we lay out the tasks from the time they walk through the door till the time that they leave. Every single task that they would do in order um, is listed out on that checklist. So literally all they have to do is go through that checklist and make sure that they're doing these tasks, completing these tasks and check it off. Uh, if there was a task that just wasn't physically possible to get done that day, if it was just too busy, they'll leave me a note. There's a little note section inside of every single task to where they can let me know why it didn't get done or if somebody else did it or if it was a task that just didn't apply to that day. They let me know, they check it off. I get all of the notifications, almost like a text message on my phone. So I know when somebody gets in the clinic, I know when everybody's getting ready to leave the clinic because these little uh, checklist text messages pop up. So-and-so created or completed this task. So-and-so left a note on this task. So I can go through and I can see everything that everybody's doing, how quickly they're getting things done. Sometimes they wait till the end to check everything off. Um, but usually throughout the day, they're supposed to be checking things off because it's pulled up on their computer. So they can go through, they can check things off. It helps me gauge if somebody has too much on their plate. If I start to notice a trend that they're like, I couldn't get this done, I'm gonna get it done tomorrow. Or you know, if there's several tasks that they just can't get to and I notice that they keep pushing them off, they have too much on their plate. I can assign it to somebody who's like, what else can I do? Or finish this, finish that within an hour. And it's like, okay, they have more time to get these things done. So helps me gauge where everybody's at with their tasks. And then at the end of every day, their final task is to give me a wrap up in the note section. So from your words, tell me how today went. Sometimes the day is really smooth and they put in there, you know, business as usual, nothing to report. Cool. I know it was a good day. If it wasn't a very good day and there was some roadblocks that maybe I need to address or some good training points that people came up with, they'll leave it in the notes section. You know, today we got backed up. Rooming got a little confusing. Maybe we can train on rooming. Let's me know that those are areas that we need to focus on. And it lets me know where everybody's at at the end of their day. Even though it is just a typed out end of day wrap up, I know the staff so well that if their wording is a little off, I know that maybe they were stressed out that day, or I know that maybe, you know, I need to touch base with them in the morning, or I have a good relationship with everybody. If something catches my attention, I'll reach out to them directly. I'll call them. I'll shoot them a text message like, hey, did everything go okay today? You know, are you doing okay? Um, just from little things like that, it helps me gauge where all the staff members are at the end of the day. And then it helps me gauge what they're doing during the day. Do they have too much on their plate? Do they need some more work? Where's everybody at? Yeah. Okay. And then just for the audience to clarify, Asana is a app. You can pull it up on desktop. You can pull it up on mobile and the version we use for the clinic and the features we use, it's free, right? Yeah. Okay. So it's a free thing. It's Asana, A-S-A-N-A. -A -A. So check out Asana because that is something that, um, that, that, has changed this tremendously as far as this checklist system. And, th and then with that, explain a little bit about how things are incentivized with Asana and whatnot and how that works. Sure. So if all of our staff members complete their checklist, uh, basically it's doing their job. If all of our staff members do their job, they will get an extra dollar an hour on their paycheck for that week. If a staff member misses one task that week, they forfeit their incentive for the entire week. So it helps keep the staff members accountable. What I like to tell new hires is we want everybody to be a leader in their own role. So you basically have it laid out for you. We set you up for success with this checklist. You have all your tasks laid out for you in order that you need to get them done. We can add in there one-off tasks. So if somebody needs a care plan created, a task is created for that. So that way we know that we need to get that care plan done. And then when we're done, we check it off and move it out of the way onto the next thing. So it helps 
keep everything in order, in line. Everybody knows what everybody's doing. So basically you do your job, you get an extra dollar an hour incentive for that week. Yep. I was muting in the background because I can hear my wife vacuuming in the other room. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. So, so from a standpoint of incentivizing staff or even having to like reverse incentivize, you know, when someone's messing up and you're like, Oh, I wish I could debit you like in your pay, you know, so that you just know not to do this. Like it, it affects everyone. It affects you, which you can't do that. You can't reduce someone's pay, but if you have this sort of system, they can either meet their bonus or they don't. Now, the cool thing is like our staff as it sits right now, they, uh, what, most of the time they all hit their bonus. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. I mean, solid, solid team. I did, I did a Facebook live about this yesterday. So make sure that you go and you follow our stuff on Facebook on, on functional movement for chiropractors, Facebook group. Mm -hmm. So it's just called functional movement for chiropractors. You can request to join. And if you're a chiropractor, we'll let you in and just start watching some of our Facebook lives and posts and things that we do, because it, 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 it tells some real life stories. And I had a good one yesterday, just about just a change in guard in our front office and how much it changed things in the clinic and how right now in the clinic, we technically have less staff than we usually operate with, but things are just going so smoothly, even though people have more to do. There's less moving parts in this case. Everyone's getting along really great. And uh, yesterday in our pre-shift huddle slash like weekly staff meeting, I was, I was, you know, I was recognizing that and I was letting the team know how, how great it is and how much we appreciate it. And then I let everyone go around and talk and share what they think positive or negative. And everyone said something positive. So then the second time around, I'm like, okay, now everyone, I, I want you to say something that you think we can improve. Like, don't just feel like, you know, cause I, I didn't want one person to say something negative and feel like they were going to be singled out because everyone else had something positive to say. So I forced everyone tell me something we can improve. And everyone had something and it was all very like minor and good constructive things. And, but uh, that, that whole checklist system has enabled Danny to essentially manage remotely most of the time she comes in we have a new hire she comes in for in-person staff meetings not all of them and um she'll come in a couple days a week just to check in with the team and you know she'll come in in person when we all go out to lunch this friday <laughs> yeah. right <laughs> yeah yeah it's funny linda linda is my wife she was asking me yesterday she's like so is danny gonna eat food at this restaurant Oh my gosh. <laughs> she only asked that because Danny, Danny has a thing about other people preparing food. Yeah. Right. So it's are you, good. are you going to eat food there? Yeah, I've gotten better. So this will be the third <laughs> or fourth time that we've gone. And every time I get a little bit better, but yeah. I, I mean, it, it, it's helpful at Takano's because they just got like a big slab of meat that comes straight out of the oven and yeah. they're just cutting it off. So no one's touching it. Yeah. Yeah. But I just, I don't know. It grosses me out because people touch your food. I watch a lot of cooking shows, so I just see them touching and it's just, no, thank you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Fun fact about Danny. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. What's the, I guess, yeah. Is there, is there anything else in your schedule that you can, you can clarify on? Like, I mean, if you just think about like other tasks you have to do today, like, are you meeting with any other doctors today? Um, no, but I'm actually doing an interview, a Zoom interview at 1230 for somebody that applied. Yeah, this uh, is someone doing, new, someone different. Yeah, yeah. She applied over the weekend. So I'm doing a Zoom interview at 1230. So that's something that, you know, just got added to my day a couple hours ago. So just being able to like adjust around that. Mm -hmm. Typically, that's lunchtime for the kids. Um, but luckily, Trey's home today, so he can take care of lunch. But uh you know, on a typical day when I'm by myself and, you know, all these things that I have to do in the morning when I'm sitting down, peace and quiet with my coffee, I can start to lay out my day. Like I need to make sure that I have wiggle room around this time because that's when everybody's getting to the office and they're probably going to have some questions. I try and strategically plan my Zoom calls around when the kids are going to be most focused on their schoolwork so I can step aside. It's going to be quiet. I can do a Zoom. And then you know, activities in the afternoon, uh, going to jujitsu, jiu if we have wrestling, um, if the kids want to get out of the house, we've been going to the YMCA for PE, uh, you know, stuff like that. My laptop goes everywhere with me. So I'm always available. If something pops up, I can whip open my laptop, 
log into my hotspot and, you know, help out where I can. My cell phone comes in handy. I would be lost without that thing. So everybody can get a hold of me at any time. I always try and make myself available without going crazy. Um, so that way I can help where it's needed. It sounds like it's a daunting thing. Like, you know, oh my gosh, I wouldn't want to be that available. And, you know, you're, you always have your phone with you. You always have your laptop with you. I prefer it that way because I feel like if I'm not available and these things pile up, it's just more for me to handle later. Mm -hmm. So I would rather just problem solve in the moment. It's easier for me. That's my personality. I like to do that. And I don't mind being available to people if they need me. Uh, it's just in my nature. So whether it's work or somebody had a hard day at work, anything like that, I'm available. Uh, there are some boundaries where it's like, okay, I need a breather too. So I'm going to take a break. Um, you know, it's, it's my turn to do that, but yeah, I just make it work in any situation that I'm in. If we're, you know, yesterday I had a last minute doctor's appointment for Mac. I brought my laptop with me, popped it open just to make sure that if anybody needed anything, I was able to handle it. Um, and my cell phone was able to listen into our meeting and huddle yesterday. So those are just kind of things that I personally do during the day and it works for me. And if anybody else is considering, you know, this hybrid office manager and stuff like that, like figure out what works best for you. That's what works for me. So I'm able to still get my work done and still have me time, still be available for my kids. My days are long, but I don't mind. And that, that I believe comes with the give and take, because on the flip side, you know, mm -hmm. let's say Danny had to come into the office and she was there every day from seven 30 to 6 PM, right? Mm -hmm. She'd be stuck yeah. at the office the whole time. She wouldn't be able to do these other things. Yes, she'd be there, but would she really have that fulfillment in life? You know, six months into it, a year into it, would she start to get to burn out? Oh my gosh, I need to do something different. I need to spend more time with my family. I need to be more available. And so I think this model has a lot more longevity into it. Yeah. And, and I mean, it's not to say things aren't going to continue to, you know, evolve and modify like as different roles come into play or we grow. But I mean, for the most part, this has been our fairly consistent standard. She just started homeschooling kids like a couple of weeks ago. So that was a curveball, but it's yeah. worked fine. And, you know, so it's like, like Danny tracks her hours. She has her hours. We use an app or something, right? Yeah. Right. So, so she'll have an app. And so it's like, if she needs to go, Hey, now I'm going to help my kids out. You know, she'll be like, okay, I'm going to put a pause on work mode. I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's, it's getting someone that you trust first off. And because you're giving that person a lot of liberty to be able to just set their own schedule and do their own thing. But mm -hmm. the way I measure it is on results and how easy is my life. Yeah. <laughs> and since Danny came along, my life is a lot easier. So that's where I'm like, yeah, you want to do that, Danny? Go for it. Yeah. I'm like, does that make you happy, Danny? <laughs> oh, okay. You know, and, 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 and so I've, I've, I've hopefully been pretty easy going. I think, I think I'm pretty easy going with this whole process. And, yeah. and, um, you know, I, I just, just it, it's been nice because I've had a lot of different office managers over the years. And this has definitely been our most solid, setup we've ever had. So I don't want Denny to go anywhere. I want her to keep doing this forever. I want her to be like 80 years old and be our office. No, I don't think I'll have the clinic open when <laughs> she's 80 years old. We'll be doing something else. But I mean, like even other projects and stuff, like I, I've bounced this off of Danny in the past. I'm like, you know, if, if we end up doing some other project or start another business or something like, I, I, you know, if there's a place for you to be involved in it, like I'd like you to be involved in it. Yeah. And so, so f finding someone like that is huge. But I think this kind of position is appealing to people more than just mm -hmm. sitting in an office all day long. Someone who has the skill sets that Danny has, you know, to have to corral them in an office, like a nine to five or an eight to seven or however long these days are. I don't think that spells longevity and fulfillment for a lot of people. It can also be, I find sometimes that it could be a distraction because if That's I'm physically in the office, I tr now I try and make my, my visits short and sweet and like productive. I'm here for a purpose. I'm training, I'm interviewing a new hire in person, or we're doing staff meeting. I try not to linger mm -hmm. because when I linger and I'm in there trying to get things done, 
then staff will come to me and ask questions to where if I wasn't there, they're like, well, I don't want to bug Danny. She's at home. So they problem solve and they figure it out themselves. If it's a big problem that they can't figure out on their own, or it's like a little training point, they'll come to me. But if it's something small and they can ask somebody else, or they can all come together and figure it out themselves, they will. If I'm there, it's convenient just to come in and ask me. And of course, I'm going to, you know, do what I can to answer their questions. That's just who I am. But it is a distraction if I'm sitting right there, they can come to me and then I'm pulled away trying to do something else. And it's not as easy to turn on and turn off and get back to what I was doing because there's so much going on in the office at home. I know, I know my boundaries, I know my limits and I can turn off, turn on when I need to. And they problem solve better when I'm not there. I think, I think last thing to round this out, we're about 45 minutes in, but I think it's great content. And I think this is going to be really helpful for a lot of chiropractors and their staff. L- last thing that we didn't start with, how many kids do you do you guys have in the house and how many are doing homeschooling? So we've got seven kids total. Five of them are doing homeschool. The oldest is 18. And then um, our second oldest is in an academy school. The rest of the children are homeschooling. Okay. So now just for those of you out there who, who, who <laughs> just look, Look at your own situation. There's very few of you that have seven kids in the household. So Danny's probably got a one up on you on that one. And she's able to handle this and do all the stuff that she just talked about. And there's systems behind it. And these are things that, you know, she, she can help share this with you. Like if you need help with this, like whether you're a member, take advantage of that, reach out to Danny, pick her brain a little bit on it. Might, might make us have to create a whole program just on this whole thing. (laughs) Right. Yeah. And, and if you're someone that's not a member, like you can reach out, check out our demo and you could schedule to do a zoom call with Danny and you can have a conversation and get a better idea if this would be an asset for you in your clinic. And we can help replicate and set up this, you know, set up in your clinic for an office manager. Uh, If you have an office manager that's super stressed out and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm ready to quit. And you've been going through staff like crazy. Set up a call where you and that staff person reach out to Danny you know, and, and just walk through this and talk through it. And you can probably problem solve and find some really just, you know, like enlightening solutions that will be a win-win for everyone. Last thing I think to close this out, can you share a little bit about when things do become too much and when it does overwhelm, how do you deal with that and share, share maybe times that you look back and you're like, oh, I could have handled that differently because we're all human. I'm not saying that yeah. to fault you. I'm just saying like to kind of show some vulnerability that, you know, we're talking about how, how everything moves perfectly, but it's not always a perfect world. So talk about like great ways of handling things and ways that maybe are not handled as perfectly, which, which to be honest, in the time I've known you, I can't really think of that many times where things, you know, have ever been a problem, but I'm just throwing it out there because like, you know, you sit down to watch a movie. The movie's not interesting unless there's some kind of drama and turmoil and overcoming. So share share that a little bit with our audience. Yeah. So obviously it's not always perfect. Some days are are harder than others. And just recently, um, you know, I got off my schedule. I wasn't as disciplined as I should have been. And I was not holding to my boundaries the way that I should have been. And I was taking on a lot of other people's emotional stress and all of that and totally deviated from my discipline and my structure. And it just all blew up one day and I couldn't handle it. So I just needed to tell everybody I'm going to check out for a little bit. Just leave me alone. I need to decompress. Um, So I spent almost an entire day by myself just so that way I can think back on on the things that went wrong, what I need to do moving forward, give myself a little bit of a pep talk. Um, And after that, I was good to go. But sometimes my plate does overflow and I have to kind of shut everything out for a little bit. So that way I can restructure my boundaries and kind of get myself back on track and remind myself that I don't always have to be available to everybody at every minute during the day, um, you know, I'm one person. And from the time that I wake up to the time that I go to bed, somebody always needs something from me, but I also need something from myself too. 
And if I am overwhelmed, that is going to spill over onto other people. So there's days where I have to put myself in check and just kind of shut everything out for a little bit, give myself a little bit of a pep talk, restructure my boundaries, get back on track, discipline, structure, and then just move forward. So, so in that, are there strategies that you have, like physical strategies? Do you go outside and take a walk? Do you meditate? Do you like deep breathe? Are there things that you can share that you found that are helpful for you? So certain things that are helpful for me, just because I am surrounded by, you know, ton of people all day long, (laughs) I just need to sit by myself. Um, I like to write things down. um, So I'll write things down just so that way I can go back and reread it or just a visual of something. Um, But I personally like to be by myself and just kind of take a couple of deep breaths, think about things, reflect on things, write things down. Um, If I try and go outside, somebody's going to ask me to walk the dog. (laughs) So I just try and like go in my room, turn my phone off, uh, turn everything off and just kind of reflect on everything. Okay. So maybe kind of a form of just almost like meditation. You're just sitting there. Mm-hmm. reflecting thinking yeah distraction free that's the biggest thing is like distraction free um you know once a month i'll go get my nails done but i feel like there's still you know distractions there i'll still be on my phone for as long as i can helping out um so in these situations where i really just kind of go in my room it's my safe spot it's my quiet place when i go in there i can literally turn off all distractions and have time to reflect. So I guess, yeah, that would be meditation. There you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Something that, that just on, on my end, I guess I'll, I'll share. And I mean, I, I think everyone should do something like this too. I think it's really helpful, but I know it's not for everyone, but for me, what, what, what I started doing a couple months ago, I got back into this routine again, as much as sometimes I don't like this idea of having to wake up so early, but I do. I, I, I start, like I try to get in bed by eight 30 every night, which is hard to do. Sometimes it's like last night I went to sleep at nine 30, but I wake up at four or four 15, four 30 at the latest. And I do that every morning, pretty much seven days a week. So I try not to sleep in at all ever. And on weekends, I almost like doing it even more. Cause I'm like, Oh, I can do even more. And I don't have anything I have to do afterwards. And it's like, I, I, I love being able to get up early in the morning. Like I did it this morning. I woke up at four o'clock this morning before my alarm, my alarm was set for four fifteen. I just, it's like automatic now. And that's my time to be able to decompress and just, I'm not, I mean, no one else is awake. So no one's reaching out to ask any questions. Yeah. And typically I'll go to the gym. I built a whole gym at home in our garage, but my wife, Linda wakes up at the same time and she goes in there and runs the dogs on a treadmill. And so the dogs are in there and I'm just like, I can't do it. It's too hectic at that time. And that's when I want to work out. So I go to the gym. And so I drive over there, listen to some music, work out. I'm not on the phone at all. Like I listen to music. I don't look at my phone a single time working out at all. Like I want to throw my phone like in a river, you know, it's just, ugh. you know, I just want to get it away. Like no one bug me. It's just, and, and I work out and I come home and, um, and, you know, I can change and get ready and do all of that. And then I'm up before my son is up. I only have one child and three dogs. So Danny has me beat on that. Cause she's got seven kids and how many dogs? Two dogs. Two. Okay. So she's got nine, nine plus a husband to take care of. So you got 10 other bodies to take care of. That's insane. We have a cat too. So 11. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Okay. <laughs> all right. And, and so anyway, that's that's what I'll do in the morning. And a lot of times, like this morning when I woke up at four, I, I got in the hot tub this morning. I got a hot tub like a year ago. And I try to get in the hot tub as much as I can early in the morning. It's awesome when it's freezing cold and like 15 degrees outside in Idaho. And you walk outside and have to flip the cover off and you're freezing and you're getting in. But I do that. I get in. I have my cup of coffee while I'm in my hot tub. And, and I'll watch a YouTube video on like usually like Tim Pool or something, some kind of political stuff, just an update what's going on in the world. I find that relaxing for some reason. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's what I've been doing. The, a, a couple of years ago, I almost had like a breakdown. I was so stressed out. And so I would wake up early in the morning and I would meditate. I would do a lot of breathing drills and stuff. And that helped me a ton. And I would do all my mobility and my traction in the morning. 
And that's part of in our 12 week transformation, which is this whole program we teach to patients. We, we, we talk to them about developing a morning routine, a morning ritual. And doing that has helped me a ton. Some people don't like to do it in the morning. They do it at a different time of the day. But that's my thing is that morning ritual helps me a lot. And then I write stuff down of what I need to do for the day. And, you know, and as soon as I get done on this with you, Danny, and get this thing uploaded and across, I have a list of other stuff I'm going to do. And because we've developed a lot of these virtual things, like our virtual our virtual appointments, the broths and froths, the day two, day three for patient, the real benefit of that is it's allowed me to be out of the clinic more. So I did a virtual appointment this morning before I took my son to school at 7.30 a.m. I get to be at home. I get to work on my own pace. My wife's at home. I'm going to take a break here in a little bit, eat lunch, watch another hour of like the new Yellowstone that just came out, yeah. right? And then I'll get back to work again, mm -hmm. you know? And I love that. I love being able to just take a break from work. Like you can do that too, Danny. And that's so cool. Cause if you just need a break and you're like, I want to go hang out with my kids or like, I don't know if you ever watched any TV series or shows or anything, or you don't have time for that, but you know, like that, that helps me. Cause I can just change my brain into something else. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, cool, good. Now I'm ready to get back to work. Yeah. So I wanted yeah. to share that piece as well, because mm -hmm. I think I think, uh, I think people having options and knowing how to deal with stuff and how to, you know, have that level of balance for themselves. Cause especially in your case, like, yeah, it sounds like how you're wired just as a person. And you've done this at a young age because you were a single mom for several years, mm -hmm. taking care of all those kids on your own. Yeah, It comes so natural to you to be a giver and to be someone that wants to help everyone else. And then the problem with that is, who reaches out to you and says, are you okay? I mean, Trey's your husband. He's a wonderful guy. I'm sure he's your rock as far as like turning to you and supporting you. Mm -hmm. I try to, whenever I think about it, going like, Dan, are you okay? How you doing? You know? So I feel like <laughs> hopefully I can check on you periodically. And, and, uh, and I think that you've, you've nurtured and developed such a great relationship with the staff that everyone looks to you kind of like mama. And so mm -hmm. they also care for you and, and, I'm sure when they're not in their own thing, they're checking in with you too, you know, making sure that you're okay. So, I mean, it, it's really built like a great family and everyone has, I think, really good, solid relationships. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, 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 and that, that was built through systems though. You have to follow mm -hmm. systems to get to that point. Cause you don't have yeah. the systems, you have the chaos and then you don't have time to have all the smoothness. Cause you're just trying to fix all the fires all the time. Yeah, definitely. Like you can't, when you were talking about, you know, getting up early in the morning and stuff like that, you know, I get up before the kids. So that way I have time to think and I have time to plan out my day. You can't just sleep in, get up and just wing it. Whatever happens, happens. Like you have to be disciplined. You have to have structure with some flexibility, but the flexibility needs to be as it comes, not just, well, I'm just going to wing it. Whatever happens, happens. Cause then it's just going to be chaos. And so systems in place for everything that you do in the office at home in your personal life, have systems, structure, discipline, all of that stuff, or else it's just going to be chaos. Yep. We don't want chaos. Yeah. We want predictability. Yeah. All right. Well, very good. Awesome. Uh, I hope everyone out there who's listening to this got some benefit from it. Whatever platform you're listening to this on, if you can comment below and just let us know what you think or any ideas on what else you want to see us cover. And we will see you soon with another episode sharing whatever we can share. I mean, this is stuff that we just think, okay, how, how do we share real life stuff that we feel like could be helpful for others? That's why we do it. I mean, we took an hour today doing this. Okay. You're probably like, I have work to do. I'm ready to switch yeah. gears. Get back to work. All right. So with that said, we'll see you on the next episode. So thank you so much, Danny, for taking the time to share all of this stuff. And thank you for being you and being so awesome. And you are super appreciated. And I look forward to the whole team going out to uh, a celebratory lunch this Friday slash Thanksgiving celebration. That'll be nice. Mm -hmm. And with that said, I will run the outro. Check out our demo. You'll hear the link. You can get a free book. There's all kinds of stuff. Let's roll that. And we'll see you on the next Want one. Want more Move Now Secrets? If so, then go get your copy of my best-selling book and watch my 30-minute behind-the-scenes Move Now demo. My book is called Move Well Secrets, and you can get your free copy at book.movenowyou.com. 
and watch the 30-minute demo of our exclusive doctor training portal at demo.movenowyou.com. With these two resources, you'll find my top 22 secrets that we've used to build one of the smoothest running, results producing, and super profitable exercise departments within a chiropractic clinic in the entire profession.